What's up, folks? It's Tobin here. And you're probably thinking to yourselves, that Tobin, he knows everything. Well, let me tell you something. I, I don't. I don't know very many things. In GIS in particular, there are a couple different areas I haven't really ever ventured into. One of them is remote sensing. All those pixels look the same to me. And the other is routing. I've never done a whole lot with routing. Mecklenburg County has the same kind of routing needs every government has. Got to get your police cars and your fire trucks and your ambulances to different places. And you got to route building inspectors and garbage trucks. But we've always had canned vendor solutions to all of that stuff. So I've had to help massage data into these different things. For E911, Mecklenburg actually had three different systems at one time. One for medic, one for fire, and one for police because reasons. So I've done that, but for my routing, for my needs, it's usually a point to point, like, uh, hey, here's where you go vote. You wanna know how to get there? And I will throw you right at Google Maps because that's probably what you want. You can send that straight to your phone, which is gonna route you there. It'll have options to route you there by bus or other things that may not have myself. That's usually the way to go. But I wanted to look at routing and I found this thing I want to share it with you because it's awesome. If I can find it. This open source routing machine, which I'm sure everybody that really does routing already knows about, and this will be very boring for you, but I'd never really seen this. Or if I did, I forgot because I'm not into routing. Uh, what this can do is take a data dump from OpenStreetMap and just magically set up all your routing for you complete with an API you can call from, from whatever you're using, from your website, and it is nuts fast. So they very conveniently have a Docker image for it, and setting it up is super simple. What you'll do is extract a, a OpenStreetMap chunk from GeoFabric or wherever, and what I usually, I, I'm doing this anyway to build our, our vector tiles. So I've got this laying around and you run three commands on it. And this is just prepping the data. And they'll run fairly quickly and you'll end up with, this was my starting uh, OpenStreetMap dump and it generates all of these other files for you. And these are all the files it's going to use to do its routing. And uh, I don't know what's any, in any of these things. It's all, it's all magic to me. But you just run a few commands through Docker. You'll need Docker, of course. And it builds all this stuff. Once that stuff's built, it's built. You can copy that up to a, ho a web server host somewhere. And you just start the Docker server pointing it at this OSRM data. And you are golden. You are serving routes like nobody's business and you're serving them super fast. These numbers here are not lying to you. This is how fast it is coming up with routes. It's, 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 how, how does it do that? I don't know. I'm using curl here for a benchmark because there is, I tried Apache bench, but when it responds with the request, it's like Apache bench doesn't figure out that it's done and it sits there and waits a long time. So it looks weird. You can see here through curl, it is super crazy fast. And it's spitting back JSON. You go to the project site and you go to their documentation. You will see all the various routes you can use. There's a route service. There's a trip service. You want to do traveling salesman type stuff. It will even spit back Mapbox vector tiles, which is crazy to me. It has, it's really, and the API is really very well thought out. You can do really anything you need to do with it, at least that I can think of. So that response will look something like this. And by default, the geometry comes back as a weird uh, route service. It comes back as this polyline format, which is like this encoded coordinate system, I guess Google uses. 
Uh, it just looks weird. So I'm having it spit that back out straight as a GeoJSON. The Polyline format is much more compact, but I'd have to convert it to GeoJSON on the client end anyway, so who cares? And it spits back all this stuff. I've re requested all the route steps. So it's a very long response, but this is a route between two coordinates I picked at random in Mecklenburg County. And you can see, one thing to note is that the size of the data that you use is directly correlated to the amount of RAM that this Docker image is going to take up. So it's a, uh, you got to be aware of that. I the first time I ran it, I did like my my complete area I do for my vector tiling, which includes Mecklenburg County and all of this other stuff just for background. And that was like about 600 megs of RAM it was taking because it's loading those files it made into memory, which is still nothing. But uh, if you got like a one gig of RAM digital ocean droplet, well, you start to worry about that kind of stuff. So I chopped Mecklenburg County out to an area around so, a lot tighter. And now it's doing around 160 megabytes of RAM, which is a little bit friendlier. Something to keep in mind if you want to deploy this on a really tiny uh, server someplace. But it's it's nuts. It barely hits the CPU when you, you throw things at it. It's, it's awesome. I made this little demo site. You can tell I, I put a lot of effort into this. And it is just to see how this might work and integrate with, with one of our websites. And the OSRM folks very kindly have a, let's see, there's a link to it somewhere if I can find it. Ah, I had looked at PG routing for, for routing within PostGIS and it's really cool, but they don't have a natural language route description like turn left here, turn right there. Uh, they, I looked on their, their wiki and they they have some good reasons for not having that. That's very language and locale dependent. Uh, but uh, there, you know, you'd have to find something someone had done for that or write one of those yourself. This, they have a OSRM text instructions thing you can include in JavaScript. And you can give it a language. I'm not sure what all languages it supports but it will give natural language routing information back to you. So it'll say, turn left here, turn right there. So on this uh, little demo I cooked up, here I'm just giving it two coordinates and say, make a route. See, it's made this route. You can see it's, it's like instant. Here's the route it made. And I just had it, when you hover along here, I didn't put a lot of effort into this it will show you where that particular thing. And you'll see it's head southwest, turn right here, turn left there, go straight. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I also did a traveling salesman. Traveling salesman, they let you really, the, the API is really smart. Uh, by default, it's a round trip from the starting point, but you can have set specific starting points and ending points. It's just taking uh, four random locations I picked and it made a traveling salesman solution. You can see all the directions here to get from one place to the other. Yeah, that is really awesome. And it, so this took me, once I got my PBF file, 10 minutes to set up and a good bit longer screwing around with this because I decided to try Svelte, which is really cool, but it's, it's quite different. Then, then view or react. Svelte is a, a reactive framework that essentially goes away. It's not a tool that ships down to your client. It is a transpiler. So Svelte, 
your client never gets a Svelte library like it would for React or Vue or Preact. Svelte just kind of goes away when you, when you build your code. So it makes really tiny, fast code. Doesn't use virtual DOM. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. So I tried to play around that, which uh, made this take a lot longer than it might have otherwise. But it's, it's fairly basic. I just have a Svelte app. Uh, bigger, bigger. No. <laughs> uh, bigger, bigger, bigger. There we go. I just have this Svelte app and it's just a couple of components. Uh, Svelte has a built-in thing, a central storage, kind of like Vuex, where you can set uh, some things for for your your app to share and watch. Uh, you do a little bit differently when you watch stuff. You do one of these guys, uh, which isn't really JavaScript. It's like a Svelte thing, which is the only thing in Spelt that isn't really JavaScript, and uh, I find that slightly irritating, but it works fine. So what I'm saying here is this step long lat, if you're hovering over a, a step, do call this show step function. This show step function just uh, puts it on the map, essentially. So there's, there's not a whole lot of code here at all. The route, is doing a fetch and it's sending some coordinates to this uh, Docker container that's running. And when it gets back this route, which is point to point route, it sends the coordinates from the from the JSON return off to draw that line. And then for each leg, it's using this OSRM text instructions to take what it's sending back, which is not turn right, turn left, that kind of stuff and it's translating it into that so you can make those nice kind of directions. And that's all I wanted to say. This, it's really cool. And again, everybody probably knows about OSRM, but I'm not really a routing kind of person. But if I have a routing need, this is probably what I'm gonna use. It seems to be, it's extremely fast, it's low resources, uh, assuming you're using a smaller area. And it is, uh, has its own API built in, and I can't get it to do anything wrong. It just rolls right along. It's got some options to build networking optimized for say walking or biking. Uh, this is using OpenStreetMap data. So in the Charlotte area, OpenStreetMap data is, it's quite frankly better than our data in most cases, especially for something like, like this. But uh, if you're in an area that doesn't have great OSM coverage, uh, first, you know, it's it's an open open data set. You should put that data in. But if you don't have time for that, and then this might not be the best solution for you. But if you're looking for general OpenStreetMap based routing, OSRM is really great and really easy, and the documentation is also fantastic. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I will talk to you later. Bye bye.